Hi, it's Maya here, and today I'm going to talk about the Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu, which is a collection of seven stories, one of which is a novella. Many of you probably know Liu from her dark fantasy comic series Monstrous, uh, but she has written novels too. I only have experience with the Monstrous comics as well, but I loved her world building in that, so I was really looking forward to uh, reading these short stories. And the cover, by the way, is by her monstrous collaborator, Sana Takeda. These stories once again show the author's strength in world building. Some of them are even a bit too packed for such short stories, but most of them feel real and unique and well thought through. Each short story has an author's note following it, and this is something that I really enjoy in short story collections when they had these notes. I also prefer the notes to be after the stories, like they are in this one, instead of before the stories, because then I have more contexts on the author, uh, author's thoughts. Something that Leo remarked upon uh, in one of her author's comments, and something that I also noticed, was that a few of these stories share in common these magical forests uh, with terrible secrets or powers. Apart from the recurring dark forest, I also found the recurring themes of making your own family and finding your own place. But let's talk about all the stories individually and how I felt about them. Since there are seven stories, I feel like I can actually do that in one video. So the collection starts with Sympathy for the Bones, in which an apprentice witch seeks her freedom. And this one was one of those stories that I didn't have strong feelings about, and I gave it three stars. It had things and themes that I find interesting, like revenge, family and freedom, and a main character with maybe questionable morals and also doll magic. But the story just didn't hook me. I think it might have been the setting that just wasn't my cup of tea, or then I wanted it to be a bit more spooky and dark. The next story was The Briar and the Rose, an original take on Sleeping Beauty. This one was my second favorite from the whole collection, my favorite is coming later, and I gave it four stars. We follow a main character called The Duelist, who is the bodyguard for this sorceress who can't stay up too late every Saturday because of a dark secret that we learn during the story. It's also a love story between two women, one of which isn't the sorceress. To probably no one's surprise, I really like this. This is one of my favorites. You know I like fairy tale retellings, and this was a very different take on Sleeping Beauty, uh, with a different storyline, a different setting, different sorts of characters, but it still had some elements in common, and I like the main character and the love story. This one was originally published in the Starlit Wood fairy tale anthology, which I really want to get my hands on, because I have now read two stories from that, and I really liked both of them. Now we move on to a story that I think had a name changed between the publication and my advanced reader's copy. So um, I noticed that now this story is called The Light and the Fury. In my copy it was called Call Her Savage. And I gave this one two stars. In a world powered by crystal skulls, a warrior returns to save China from her jealous ex. And that short description from the back of the book sounds really exciting, doesn't it? But to me, this was one of the weakest stories in the collection. I found that it had way too much world building for such a short story. So the crystal skulls powering everything, as well as the people getting sort of superpowers from them. These were very interesting concepts, but it was a lot. And I don't think it worked as a short story. The fraught relationship between the main character and her ex was my favorite part, but it was a very short part of the story. From that, we move on to my absolute favorite, the standout of the collection, The Last Dignity of Man, which I gave 4.5 stars. A rich young businessman who owns a large company specializing in biotech models his life after Lex Luthor. This one was a story that I felt uncertain about in the beginning, but that very quickly turned into my favorite. The main character was really the strength of this story. He wants there to be good in the world, he wants to be loved, but isn't sure either possibility really exists. He is so lonely and conflicted, and it really radiates throughout the whole story in this sad atmosphere, and it was such a good story. From that one we move on to another story that I really liked, and that one was Where the Heart Lives. I gave this one four stars, and this was a cozy story about finding your family, and it was my third favorite from the collection. Lucy is not wanted by her father or her brothers, and is sent a few towns over to be a servant girl to this mysterious lady. There, in a house surrounded by a haunting forest among strange magic, she finds somewhere she belongs. Some parts in the end were perhaps a bit rushed, but I really enjoyed the feel of this. I liked how magical everything in the world felt, and how cozy and peaceful life in the cabin felt, 
even though the people had their own tragedies and there was a dark and scary magic around. This was a found family type of story and this was apparently a prequel to a series of hers. Then we moved to another one that was a bit of a miss for me and that one was After the Blood, which I gave 2.5 stars. This is a post-apocalyptic story set after some sort of a pandemic where people now live among these overgrown forests and strange monsters and magic. This takes place at a farming community led by the Amish. The main character isn't Amish, she lives on the outskirts, but there are Amish characters in the story. This one had a vampire in it, so one would think that I would really like this story, but sadly, no. Apart from the vampire, this one also had a lot of other stuff in it as well. Uh, the post-apocalypse, uh, the Amish farming community, past trauma, strange new magic, ghouls, something going on with the forest. It was hard to get a grasp on because not all of the elements felt quite done yet to me. The main character in this one was also one that I got the least from in this whole collection. And maybe it was also slightly too long. And the final story in the collection was the title story, Tanglewood Palace, which is also the longest of the stories. It's the novella, and I gave it three stars. The official description goes like this. A princess runs away from an arranged marriage, finding family in a strange troupe of traveling actors at the border of the kingdom's deep dark woods. And that is a pretty good description. This one was fine. I liked the fairy tale setting, uh, the characters were good, but I wanted a bit more from the plot. I enjoyed it, but it was a middle-of-the-road story for me. I felt like all the other stories had more of a Madri Liu twist to them, and this is also the earliest written story in the collection, so that might have something to do with it. So the stories in this collection were written between 2009 and 2016, and the two of my least favorites were both from 2010, so they were earlier works of Liu's. I give the collection as a whole three stars. It is always hard for a short story collection to get more from me, since there are always stories I love more and stories that don't work for me. But I am very happy that I got to read The Last Dignity of Man and The Briar and the Rose especially. The Tanglewood Palace from Madre Lil comes out June 15th from Tachyon Publications. And that's all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.